This is MSJ Chem. In this video, I'll be looking at the oxygen saturation of hemoglobin. As we saw in the previous video, hemoglobin carries oxygen in the blood and myoglobin stores oxygen in the muscles. They do this by binding reversibly with oxygen, which forms a weak bond with the iron to ion in heme. The binding of oxygen does not change the oxidation state of the iron ion, which remains at plus two. Therefore, hemoglobin and myoglobin are oxygenated rather than oxidized. The oxygenated products are known as oxyhemoglobin and oxymyoglobin. The binding of oxygen to hemoglobin is a cooperative process. This means the ability to bind oxygen is increased by the initial binding of the first oxygen molecule. The first oxygen molecule binds with low affinity but increases the binding affinity of further oxygen molecules. This results in a sigmoidal or S-shaped saturation curve. So here we can see an oxyhemoglobin dissociation curve. On the y-axis we have the percentage saturation of hemoglobin and on the x-axis we have the partial pressure of oxygen. The ability of hemoglobin to bind or release oxygen depends on the partial pressure of the oxygen. When the partial pressure of oxygen is high, such as in the lungs, each molecule of hemoglobin can carry its maximum of four oxygen molecules. As the blood circulates around the body, the blood experiences lower levels of partial pressure. At low partial pressures of oxygen, the hemoglobin releases some of the oxygen it is carrying. So at high partial pressure, such as in the lungs, the hemoglobin is saturated with oxygen. At lower partial pressures, such as in the tissues, the saturation of the hemoglobin decreases. This is because the hemoglobin has released some of the oxygen it was carrying due to the lower partial pressure. Next we look at the effect of temperature on the oxygen saturation of hemoglobin. An increase in temperature reduces the affinity of hemoglobin for oxygen. So as we can see from the graph, the dissociation curve has shifted to the right at the higher temperature. Therefore, hemoglobin more readily releases oxygen at higher temperatures in the cells during high metabolic activity such as exercise. Next we look at the effect of pH and the concentration of carbon dioxide on the oxygen saturation of hemoglobin. A decrease in pH reduces the affinity of hemoglobin for oxygen. Once again, by looking at the graph, we can see the dissociation curve has shifted to the right at the lower pH. Increasing the concentration of carbon dioxide has the same effect as carbon dioxide dissolves to form carbonic acid. During cellular respiration, carbon dioxide is produced, which decreases the pH, causing hemoglobin to release oxygen. And finally, we look at the greater affinity of fetal hemoglobin for oxygen. Hemoglobin exists as a different form in fetal blood. It has a greater affinity for oxygen than normal hemoglobin, so more oxygen binds at lower partial pressures. If we look at the graph, we can see that the dissociation curve has shifted to the left. This allows the fetal blood in the placenta to take up oxygen from the mother's blood.